Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Good. Um, Good. It's nice to hear y'all's voices. Yeah. No, I, was, I was about to tell you that it blew my fucking shoulder out. <laughs> How'd you do that, Lyle? Were you, were you working out or having sex? Yeah, be, on, be honest. And... Just say yes. Just say yes. <laughs> Get well, a little, I was, I was make yourself a little louder, yeah, Lyle, if, if you can. Just uh, just a bit. You're always a little bit low when we first start for some reason. So I, uh, a little bit low. I was having sex at the gym. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. just, that's Sorry, when I blew stuff. my shoulder up. Yeah. See, I was on the chest flies. And Makes I was, perfect sense. I had like 100 pounds on there. Not a, it's not a lot of load. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not a big load. <laughs> Listen big in. load, yeah. But Listen the in. bigger it's load was going to come a little bit later. <laughs> and so I'm I'm going and you know I'm I'm sprawled out and then I'm, I'm bringing it in I'm sprawled out bringing it in and I sprawled out and all of a sudden in my left shoulder my fiscal arm I hear this snap I'm like <clears throat> mm, ooh and I was like that fucking hurt and then I kind of just finished up the set went on to something else and then it, it was hard to do so I just kind of kind of quit doing it woof. And then I did a bunch of curls for the girls, you know, you know how it is. And then, uh, curls for the girls. And... Well, I love you, man. <laughs> well, dude, I went, I left there and then I was out in the parking lot and that's when it really fucking just hit how bad it hurt. I didn't, I literally got an hour of sleep last night and Damn, that, that also was horrible. When it hurts and you're not moving it or not working it, that's when you got, uh, I can't you know, move my bang. shoulder. If, if I push, if somebody were push on my shoulder, you would, Get me to fucking probably collapse down on my knees. I mean, it hurts that bad, dude. Well, you've been dared, audience. Yeah, if you run into Wild Lyle out in the wild, Wild, wild. <laughs> wild in the Lyle, you run into Wild. Be Ow. sure to go up and put him on that shoulder. Push me on my shoulder, make me cry. Well, hopefully that oh, gets dude. better. Well, I'm sorry you're hurting. That sucks. Well, it's it feels a little bit better today, but not really. I mean, I sure. cough and I could hear it snap in there. So, well, ooh, snap, unsnap. Yeah. Damn. Well, the thing is, is that that fistula. It's pressurized, and when I cough, it actually expands, fills you know full of blood, mm -hmm. and whatever it's doing, it's it's triggering off ligaments or split ligaments or something that broke in there, and it's like yeah. snapping. Ouch, man! Yeah. You gonna go to the doctor? But... Or are you just gonna ride this out for a bit? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do it for a week, or at least till Sunday, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. sounds fair. And then see see how it goes. I mean, dialysis. I'm not lying. That fucking sucked today. It was horrible. I came home and just kind of laid down. But oh, uh, yeah, a couple weeks and I'll be over there, right? For at least a couple days. Wow, is it already time uh, yeah. for that? Yeah, we're there. Uh, let me exciting. know by the way if you. I I have to do something after uh, in mm -hmm. Seattle. I've. I'm hosting, yeah, you told me. Uh, yeah, but like, I if you need a place to stay night before, night after, whatever, anytime, man, you well, welcome the, to my house. The plan was is that Saturday I would probably you know, do the dialysis, which I have to do anyway. Uh huh. And then either Saturday night drive over, and sure. then I'd, I'd it'd be a late appearance, or I just drive over in the morning, and I'd probably be there around like ten or eleven. I'll leave like super early, like four or five. Well, whatever uh, you want to do, man. I've, I've got the day reserved. Yeah. Because. The day that we're doing this is Monday. Yeah. And then Monday, but Monday I have to drive back. So for whatever. For those, we... of, uh, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, Lyle has, we, we talked about it some time ago, but we're getting it's close like now. Two or three. Lyle's back on the, on the list for a kidney here. And, uh, and uh, we have to go do the whole day at the hospital again. I'm, I'm going to be his, his uh, kidney buddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I know what to expect this time. It's a long ass day. Yeah. But uh, we're just going to get through it. I'm going to listen to Lyle make cracks it's at hot nurses. Yeah. Better of you <laughs> to do it twice. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, that was fun. Actually, that. That, that one was really hot. I was like, God damn, Chris, there's a lot of hot yeah, nurses yeah. here. Yeah. I and there's a nurse around, in front of yeah. us. And I'm kind of talking yeah. about her, you know, as she turns yeah. around. She goes, God damn. I was so red in the face. I was like, oh, Lyle, you're going to get fucking me too right out of this hospital, right out of a kidney. And she turned around. She said, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> we right. are hot. Did you like, really? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. She absolutely I, turned oh, she around. Totally she did. said, "Wow." Because Lyle was he was he was speaking so loud. Confusing he was like, Man, <laughs> all these nurses are 
fucking hot. And I'm like, oh, wow. Well, I'm, I maybe said like beautiful or something. I didn't say like, Never. I was well, a drogonist. You didn't, you didn't drop like an F-bomb. Flirty, but, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> but like, I was man, like, oh, boy. Nurses are just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You really never know how that shit's going to go down, do you? That's, true. That's yeah. why life is so confusing. <laughs> sometimes it plays and sometimes you're fucking fired, you shot, son. Yeah. 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 Speaking of confusing life, uh, I had a moment with my kid last night that I've never experienced. For Valentine's Day, I went out with this girl I've been seeing with her kid and my kid to the trampoline park. That was what nice. we did. We took the, the six-year-olds to a trampoline park. And uh, <clears throat> we get there, and we had pizza beforehand. And um, kids are having the time of their lives. About 30 minutes into it, Logan runs up to me. He's like, Dad, Dad I got to poop. And I was like, well, let's go sure. to the bathroom, sir. No big deal. And we start walking towards the bathroom. And as we get about, I don't know, 30 feet away from him, he goes, Dad, I really got to go. And I was like, okay, buddy. We're, we're almost there. We're trucking. And the second, his, the second his little hands touch the door, he turns back to me. And his face is just tears. Oh, like, no. He's sobbing. <laughs> Didn't make it. He's like, no, he did not. <laughs> and I have Aww, never. Little guy. I know. He was like, Dad. I pooped in my pants. Oh, and I was honey. like, oh, honey. I was like, let's get in the bathroom. And he full on shit, it's like his drawers deuced. full. Yeah. Like, and he was oh. sobbing. And like, I was like trying to be patient and kind of be like, yeah, it's okay, baby. Even Uncle Ronnie does this sometimes. You know, I mean, okay. we've all been quite, there, right? Quite recently. <laughs> right? um, but he was, uh, you know, obviously very embarrassed. He's like, don't tell them what happened. And I was like, well, we have to go home now. Because your pants are full of poop. Because <laughs> you pooped your pants. <laughs> Let me explain oh, how the terrible. trampoline park works. And or <laughs> yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> uh -huh. Broke oh, some no. news. Yeah, well, yeah. you never know. Sometimes that foreign pizza, you know. The pizza you're not really used to. Yeah. Can, uh, trigger, he literally went from list. the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Well, <laughs> like, oh, really, <laughs> truly did. Tummy yeah. full of pizza yeah. and then you hop on a trampoline. That is a yeah. fast train to oh, yeah. uh yeah keep the, keep the bathrooms nearby mm. oh that's sad yeah mm -hmm. i had a mm -hmm. uh gambled and lost scenario quite recently uh it was oh, pretty uh, yeah and it was it's here's the thing i live alone <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know yeah. it was like a little cleanup required nothing too uh, disastrous and i still felt shame <laughs> it was like mm. hey, oh, oh i really should have seen that coming um uh, mm. mm. It never stops, you know, and and it just gets worse as we get older because then we really uh, get back to where we need to get them diapers again. And I don't know, I uh, I think the oh, slimmer God. these diapers get, and the uh, I think I think we're a little behind the times in updating our um, adult. They don't. I don't know. If they, I don't think they call them adult diapers anymore. I think they call them what? Like uh, what do they call them? Handy pants. <laughs> pants. That can't be what is it that depends, right? Really, that seems really. worse than diaper. <laughs> like, oh, yes, I'll take a box. Of, but, <clears throat> handy do you pants. have any of those? Uh, <laughs> Ron, let me, see. Uh, let me, let me see. But the slimmer here. they get, and the more comfortable they get, and I think they're going to get more stylish. Just sign me up. Yeah. Then I don't have, have to. Don't have to worry. Sorry, eventually. I mean, I've already made life um, easier for myself when I can. Yeah, go ahead. Ron, Ron White has a fucking hilarious skit on him shitting his pants. And boys and girls, if you could, Don't if you're know. around a computer right now, just type it on in. Ron White shits his pants. <laughs> oh, it is hilarious. Yeah. He talks about like, you know, well, when you're my age, you know, you can kind of tell, you know, when it's going to happen. And, but, you know, by the time you realize that it's going to happen, it already did happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so according to the experts. Um... So funny calling uh, uh so you just call adult diapers uh if someone has to wear those you just call them their briefs mm. well whatever mm -hmm. i always yeah. uh, i always thought you know really it just probably depends i think they're called well, depends. wow it does depend it really <laughs> the, does depend. i have it boxer does, briefs does i don't depend. shit in them you know <laughs> oh man Bre briefs well, are more I, like i think i think given like context you mentioned. know what you're talking about right probably right sure yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how <clears throat> Rob. Uh, so we have a, a guest on coming on today. Rob, the Undertaker, is going to join us again. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit since we've Yay. had him on, and uh, I figured, you know, with everything we've been talking about lately, it'd be good to have his his perspective on some of that, perhaps. Yeah. And I know he did. I I I kind of gave him a heads up on, you know, people coming in and out of the podcast. He he was a few behind, but I think mm -hmm. he listened to him again to kind of get the gist of what we've uh, discussed. Yeah. 
Uh, is he joining us at seven thirty? Anytime. Uh, he's he's ready to go anytime. So we can. We I, I know there was a story. Perhaps you wanted to share. Yeah, yeah it's he's a real... been pretty busy because he has his own podcast too. Yeah, it, it's a real quick story I wanted to share here uh, before we get Rob on. So let me first of all. Let me load up these photos. I'm not going to send them quite just yet. But this is somewhere between fascinating. Like, this could be turned into so many different kinds of movies. Mostly it's a horror movie with a tragic ending. And the headline tells the bulk of it. Brazilian man plunges to his death after digging a hole in his home kitchen searching for gold. (laughs) No, this was. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> I bet there's gold under this here linoleum. Right. Okay, so <laughs> he, so apparently, that. I'm going to read a, a good chunk of the story. He di- he right. just died on January 5th while attempting to dig a hole. Well, not attempting to. He dug. Now, when you picture a hole dug in your kitchen, looking yeah. for gold, whatever mm-hmm. you have imagined, adjust your expectations because this hole. Oh, wow was 130 fucking feet deep. This was in Brazil. Jesus, you know the giant whoa. Christ statue in Rio? Yes. Uh, I think yep, it's in yeah. Rio. <clears throat> they sh- <laughs> they- Rio I don't know if this was tasteful or not, but they it was a good fucking comparison. This whole towers over that statue <laughs> they put it side by wow. side. Um, That's hopefully tall. he was praying to that statue as he was falling. <laughs> Listen to this crazy fucking story. So I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's probably... Oja Pimenta uh, da Silva. The 71-year-old Brazilian... I guess I can drag this over so it's actually in front of me. Ooh, that's bright. The 71-year-old Brazilian man woke up one morning with the utter certainty that there was gold hidden beneath his house in uh, Minas Gerais. I don't know. That's how you pronounce it. He started to dig a tunnel to find it. Now, (laughs) while I'm telling the story, here's a couple pictures for you to look at. It's fucking incredible. And... Everyone said, say what you will, this was a very well dug hole. <laughs> it looks oh, like a machine well, boarded up. He did shit. it by hand with rudimentary tools. So look at those while I'm continuing. So he had Jesus. spent more than a year digging this hole and hired many people to do some of the excavating work, including a, a neighbor and uh, some hired Holy help. Holy shit. I know. Isn't that nuts? 130 wow. feet. Wow. Think about how long it would take. Like if you tossed a rock down what? there, how long it would take before. Why? Why? Did I, we're getting did, did this hole we're getting there do you think he got to like 75 foot and he's like no gold yet but i know it's down there <laughs> yeah you know it's weird yeah, that's exactly um, how it went. fucking hell it wow. looks like that manoleum's actually put on the dirt that yeah see that's like you know it's not a framed up house or it's different outside of the united states that's why so weird. many cave-ins and houses and buildings collapse in other countries uh, that are they have these less strict codes. So yeah, it's literally people. It's actually built, good for something. It's built like right on top of the dirt, which looks to be clay, which I think is typical of that part of the world. Uh, goes on to say, Pimenta started to dig around a year ago. His neighbors explained that he believed he'd been visited by a spirit in a dream who told him, apparently quite convincingly, that untold riches of gold lay just beneath his feet. So the elderly man set out to excavate the hidden gold. Despite warnings from his neighbors and anyone that was willing to listen to his scheme, uh, he began to to dig a tunnel in his home that grew to be around three feet wide and 130 feet deep. And as you can see in the photos, um, that's, by the way, that's the height of a 12-story building. As you can see in the photos, it's, it looks machine built, but... No, it was just lowering himself and other people onto some pretty rickety ropes. You can see the ropes there. They don't look all that substantial, but you wouldn't need that much to carry one old guy and a couple of shovels and buckets to haul it up. Uh, he began by pl- by paying 70 Brazilian, uh, by paying about $15 a day for someone to help. Um, oh, wait, how does this read? He began by paying 70 Brazilian rias, roughly $15 a day, when he, when the hole was still shallow. But the deal... Oh, so he was spending... This is what it was costing him, essentially, to hire the people to do it and to have the tools and to just spend the time to do it, I guess. But he kept on a-going and kept on a-going. At one point, he found a, a massive boulder, and he thought he was on to something because apparently this deity or this uh, spirit that came to him said <laughs> I've that... I've struck rock! <laughs> ...said that it was underneath a big <laughs> rock underneath his kitchen. 
And so uh, he was undeterred by the difficulties, and he continued to dig alongside a friend named Antonio. He was teetering on what authorities authorities believe was a repurposed child swing. <laughs> Uh, it was like basically one of those old, remember those old seventies, eighties lawn chairs that had like kind of the wicker plastic. It it looked like that while he was attempting to remove mud and water from the hole, you know, the further he went down, there's always water down there. If you get deep enough, but unfortunately he wasn't too far down the hole on one of his trips up or down and the rope broke and he plunged 130 feet down the tunnel to his death. Um, his his buddy that was helping him uh, at the time witnessed the fall, but of course he was unable to help him. Uh, goes on to say, despite Pimenta's tragic end and fruitless quest to dig for gold, the authorities who flocked to the scene were impressed with his craftsmanship. God, <laughs> uh-huh. oh, well, you can no. see it. Anybody would be impressed with that hole. Look, yeah, I dig holes all the time true. in my yard. Don't ask why. <laughs> You're looking for gold. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. Uh, and looking for aliens and gold. Yeah, you know, when I had to bury my dog Golden out aliens. there, he's a big dog. He's a black lab. On a hot summer day, I was out there for a good couple of hours just building, and he's barely down there. <laughs> you know, a a very bored dog would dig him up rather no. easily, um, because it was so fucking hard to dig that shit. Now this is clay; it's a little easier to work with. But then you got the water and the mud. Anyway, uh, they say that this tunnel looks like something (laughs) alien, (laughs) like the perfection with which he dug it was impressive. Very small diameter. He stayed perfectly straight. No cave-ins. We found compressors, specific jackhammers used for tunnel digging. Um, But uh, it's a science to get down, very complicated, and he had experienced. We don't know uh, (laughs) how much. All right. Um, But I I couldn't find anything to say if they had got him out of it. Because who knows? Oh, um, or if we just rest in peace, or if we just, just sort of start putting the, <laughs> you just start backfilling yeah, well, it in. It's like, R.I.P. Put the linoleum back on. Grave, it's like, yeah. House for sale. <laughs> Do we have to disclose that a man fell 130 feet to his and demise under your kitchen? kitchen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just thought, what a kooky weird story man and just looking at that hole it yeah. is so absurdly deep and that's in his mm. kitchen man, so bizarre i had a whole bunch of stories but when i found out we have a guest tonight i decided to pull the rest but i had to share that one that's um, a great an awful thing yeah i feel like after if i really thought that there was treasure <laughs> And I can't mm-hmm. imagine a scenario. Maybe if, when I first moved into the house, I found a treasure map. And, sure. uh, and I wouldn't be surprised does. if I found a treasure map when I moved into this just crazy led you to, house. Just led you to about 45 bottles of Cooks. <laughs> Champagne. Some people do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, the guy Champagne. that built this house and I bought it from, he was that kind of kook. He would have buried yeah. something. <laughs> you look at the big X on the map and it's Ronnie's cellar. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the way you drink that lot. Eh? I feel like I might have gotten, at the very most, 10, 15 maybe 20 feet deep if i really had the gung-ho to get down there and been like sure, oh yeah. fuck this no yeah. one's gonna bury treasure I've seen the way you shovel snow <laughs> <laughs> shovel uphill uh, i just can't imagine like it, he was so certain so certain sure. of it yeah. um what a way to go he's famous now didn't yeah. get that treasure hey. hopefully he hunted down yeah. that spirit wherever he ended up it's like look <laughs> motherfucker he's like you no you were, you were so close it was literally three more feet <laughs> <laughs> treasure maps are one of those real deals man there's a lot of people i remember i remember like in the 1930s and 40s that used to take money they'd stick it in mason jars and buried around their property mm-hmm. uh, or well, on, along happens. fence lines more um, and more now but, uh i'm not sure how deep i want to share into this story but uh <laughs> i had a relative that had a property down in california uh during the whole uh weed growing um boom you know about 10 20 years ago when it became legal to do it if you had medical license Mm -hmm. and he was so fucked up he he was a pretty unorthodox kind of weird guy he used to take like all his pills um and put them in a a big jar like that and then bury him on the property and then i remember one of uh relatives friends was like complaining about being super hungover he's like 
Well, go down there at about 30, post 30 there, and then start digging. You'll get about two feet down, you'll find a mason chart, pull it out. <laughs> Take what you Jesus need. Man. There's Percocets, there's fucking wow. Vicodin, there's everything in there. And he pulled it out, and it was all dust. As soon as he opened it up, there was all pill for him, but as soon as he opened it, it turned to dust. Hmm. I think this is expired, bro. <laughs> well, he ended up snorting, I think, or doing oh something. Oh, my God, dude. It, it, it was <laughs> a... Is this the same guy that saw a lady fuck herself with a doorknob at a party, Lyle? <laughs> no. Because I got no, questions. No, no, no. no, no, no. I swear I've seen it with my own eyes. That was local. That was local, son. This is in California. I'd only had my first rail of 90 different kinds of dissolved pills, so I know I was sober. <laughs> I know what I saw. Yeah. You call that the grave graveyard of the drug world. Yeah. Well, he was brought down, I guess. A little of that, a little of these. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. They, they were brought down uh, apparently to do uh, trimming, trim work towards the end of the season when everybody was trimming the plants and stuff, mm -hmm. getting ready. They, they'll pay you to you know trim weed. So they flew down there and did it. Um, yeah. Made a decent round of money too. <coughs> but that's not the only thing he hid. I guess apparently he hid like wads of cash. Mm -hmm. that's Hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash. Well, think about all the people that died before they dug up their uh buried well that's stuff. the thing he died and his i don't know i think his he has a son that maybe i think got the property after he he died mm -hmm. but isn't that weird that's a weird thing to find I get out there with the metal detector no or some sort of radar <laughs> find a treasure map with all the money signs oh it's got to be all over the place Guys, should we get Rob in here and talk about yeah. a little uh, let's do return it. to return to we nature? Lots sure. to talk about. Let's know. do it. I, know, it's been, I love, I really enjoyed doing uh, all those podcasts in over two weeks last time. It was, it's nice. And I, and going back and listening, I was like, oh, I forgot about this because we did mm -hmm. it so quick, so quickly. Yeah. I loved it. It was good. I think we're on to something good here. Yeah. I think it adds a new energy to it as well. Like we've done this. Mm -hmm. um, what, what episode are we on with? We're almost at our 500th episode altogether. Man, that's great. Let's that's see. Uh, so this is 136. When we're when we're at 150 of how bizarre, we're at 500 episodes that we've recorded since we started wow. podcasting back in 2010. 500. That's fucking crazy. <clears throat> Let's hope crazy. we can get there. No falling through any holes in the kitchen. I guess just don't start digging, and you won't be falling any holes. Blame it all on my hole. I fell through a hole. <laughs> I guess that's a whole song right there. <laughs> Let's see what I did there, the whole song. I was just <laughs> looking for gold. <laughs> well, I got death in low spaces where there ain't no gold, but my body faces the upgrade beyond. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, that's good. May he rest in peace. Fell right down. I love the adventure of it, though, right? Like, it, he went for it. Like, we all talk Got big. Like, there could be yeah, a did, treasure yeah. under our... Dare to dream. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go dig Well, it looked to me, too, is in those pictures, you look down, it looked like they cleared the, the downstairs part of it. Like, it's a tube, yeah, but then once it gets to a certain stop, it looks like it's opened up down there. Like, they did a sub substantial, like, digging around down at the bottom. Yeah, you know, who like knows what... Outside the... Your, what you do, you think, do you think he YouTube tunnel digging? That's what I would have done. <laughs> how to Not dig Brazil. and tunnel. No. They probably know. know how to do it. He looked like he knew sure. what he was doing. Even everybody said so. Yeah. Like, yeah. Brazil. Hey, like nice technique. <laughs> Except for your yeah. harness. <laughs> that could have used some work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the digging, that He's was a little solid. lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Child like swing. Known for their uh, Brazilian waxes and uh, digging holes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not their infrastructure, apparently. Uh, also oh, smooth. Look, so smooth. Kitchen right on top of their dirt. Strange. <laughs> yeah, all right. Manolium right on the dirt. Sorry, I got to put Speaking of Rob, did you guys uh, on my dirt. take a look at that Kurt Cobain? Um, was that the autopsy report I sent over to you guys? Mm -hmm. I did. I, I didn't read the whole That's thing. Interesting. I, yeah. I, I read the whole fucking thing, and I was like, wow, it, I really do believe this probably to be the autopsy report. It was leaked, and somebody had posted it. Like somebody, no, John Mark know. had some more, some more information about the author that posted it, but yeah, I don't know. It was interesting, uh -huh. and you know, probably something we shouldn't. It wasn't, nothing was very, I mean, it was kind of gory, but it was... It was so medical in nature. It was hard to. It was hard to know what you were reading. 
If he's seen it, then he'd know. Because, I mean, it passed through his hands, I'm pretty sure, didn't it? Yeah, so I remember him being involved on some level with it. He uh, must have stepped away from his computer for a sec, but right, he, he was ready five minutes ago or, or so. So, ten Did you happen to send the, that autopsy thing to Rob at all? I didn't because... It was it was one of those things I was reading. I was like, I feel like I'm doing something naughty, a little dirty, <laughs> feel, a little dirty birdie. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable because I I was, was he involved in some way? I can't. I thought he was involved with yeah, that. Yeah, he was one of the way. assistants. Uh, yeah, well, he was new, time. right? He was like he was yeah. green, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he wasn't green. Right green. out of high school, but he he'd been doing uh, it since he was in high school. Let's okay. ask him if he heard about that leak and if he can verify or not, or if yeah, he wants sure. to even talk about it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He talk about it if it's. I mean, he's he's been willing to go anywhere with this. Story. He's been such. A I'm great sure guy. If, oh, if, it's, it's, if it's so. real and it's like I'm I'm sure he would be able to corroborate. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I just I feel kind of Courtney was seedy and had a backhand in the whole situation. Yeah, I've heard all you the know? different conspiracy theories, and I don't know. It's there's a lot of weirdness around. I mean, there's no question. Um, but it's also not that crazy to believe that it went down the official way uh, we're told it went down. It's it's yeah. a kooky case, and I, I think that's why, in this case, that's why the uh, conspiracy theories still continue. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's understandable why people have hesitations, and but, you know, so many people that know way more than what we're talking about have looked into it and f- just found... The the people there's like that one private detective who is so hell bent on it. You know, he was the one that was featured in the Nick Broomfield. Well, that court that was the guy. Courtney. That was the guy that 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 wrote the note. Yeah, ahead of that leaked uh, autopsy report. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but he's the one that's been the biggest purveyor of it. And you know, one um, of, something. One of the more interesting pieces of evidence, I suppose, if you want to look at it, was when El Duce from the Mentors. Um, Claimed that Courtney Love offered him, like, what, $20,000 to whack Kurt Cobain and make it look like a suicide. But that guy was fucking oh, nuts. That guy's out of his mind. He was nuts. Yeah, but, but then, not long <laughs> after that, he ended up being found cut in half uh, by a train. But at the same time, no one would have been surprised that that's just how El Duce died. Because the dude huffed paint. He was on just about every drug you can imagine. And he was fucking, he was, go look that dude up. Go look up his story. He's a couple he clicks away from Gigi Allen. I mean, he's kind of a similar uh, unwellness. And although I think Gigi Allen was a bit more of an act, uh, if I'm being honest. The more you look into that guy, it's like, he had a few different personalities. And I think this is the one he found most of his, uh, most of the attention, the feces throwing, cutting himself on stage but i think by the end he was probably that real guy el duce was just bananas even just that looking guy. at <laughs> even just looking at him in that because nick broomfield interviewed him you know before he died he interviewed el duce and he's just like standing there swatting the flies and he's like ah <laughs> and he's just like fucking very few teeth and just out of his gourd and they were a very well-known, very teeth. influential, but broke-ass little punk band from Southern California, I think. Uh, I'm not sure where they were based, but anywho. Weren't they local? I thought they were local. I thought they were, like, Seattle-based. The Mentors? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. We could find out real quick, like, while we're waiting for Rob. Mentors Band. Um, well, well, they were originally formed in Seattle and they relocated in the seventies to Los Angeles. I didn't know that they had a tie, a tie to Seattle, honestly. Seventies. Geez. They were on that long. Fuck. But by the time they uh, really got going, it looks like they were based in LA. The band, I'm just reading from the Wikipedia, the band garnered, garnered attention from both noted hard rock acts and pro censorship movements such as the PMRC, but the death of drummer and lead singer El Duce in 97 brought them <laughs> unprecedented attention. Yeah. Let me see if I got that right. Wasn't he, wasn't he killed by a train? Let me look up. Yeah, I think so. El Duce's yeah, death. sounds right. Eldon Hope. I think he was, was just, <laughs> I think he was just drunk and trying to cross the tracks <laughs> and fucking. Probably, probably what it was. Um, 
death. On April 19, 97, one day after his final appear, final performance, uh, and eight days after, boy, it was eight days after filming that interview with Nick Broomfield for the Curtin Courtney documentary, Hoke was found dead on the railroad tracks in Riverside. So I was thinking that it was Riverside there from. He was deca- oh, decapitated <laughs> in the accident. He was hit full on by a freight train doing 60 miles per. Um, and but the two, the coroner <laughs> listed it as death by misadventure. One of those uh, classic. <laughs> nice. Yeah. El, uh, Al Jorgensen of Ministry wrote in his autobiography that El Duce was killed by the train when some fans on the other side of the railroad tracks called his name. And as he attempted to cross to meet them, his toes became st- stuck in the trap. Oh, my God. Another story is that he gave a Nazi salute in front of the train as no. it mowed him down. Um, that's probably, who knows? I mean, the Nazi right, thing, right. yeah, that's all over <laughs> those guys in that whole fucking scene, that hardcore scene. Um, yeah. Due to the timing of his death, eight days after the Curtin Corny interview, conspiracy theories have speculated that his death was no related. Shit to the statements he made. But I don't know if that was, I mean, if that was eight days after he f- filmed the interview, that interview probably wasn't released. For years. At that point, yeah. So I don't know if that conspiracy, that that's one of those conspiracies that look better looking backwards than uh, at the time. Oh, 50,000. He claimed that Courtney Love offered him $50,000. That's suspect too, because that's not that much. Courtney Love was at the top I of her really- game at that point. She could have afforded it. I really think that a guy like that would say anything, right, at that point. Yeah. But, again, the a good conspiracy lingers for a reason. It's like, that's the kind of crazy motherfucker you would want to hire. Because who's going to believe him? I don't, I don't think I believe any of the conspiracy theories. But I wouldn't be shocked if, like, on her deathbed, Courtney Love was like, look, I, I had... I was behind it. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I, this is what I think after like watching all that shit and reading everything. I think that, that Kurt actually killed himself and they found the suicide note and they tacked on that little bit at the end. And that was it. You know what I mean? Like, there, there is that weird thing in the suicide note where suddenly it's different, different handwriting and different. Yeah. 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 I see, that's one of many I think things. That, I, I think that they managed, I think that somebody managed to add a little bit at the end there to say whatever it was. And mm, that know. was the extent of the, you know, fuckery. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The but way the other I thing was it, it was it yeah. was a hunting rifle. It was a, a hunting shotgun, you know, so it's like five feet long. You know? And I don't think Kurt was how how tall was Kurt? He wasn't that tall. I mean, the bass player was like six foot what? Yeah, there was talk about what well, he could like hold he's, like six, my he's tall. He's six ten. Okay, yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's giant. <laughs> Is that right? I'm looking it up. Yeah, yeah even Gro- even Grohl's tall. tall. He's like six one six, or six seven. Two. He's six seven, motherfucker. Let's not get too crazy, Damn, dude. Kurt, still Kurt was a small guy, mother. but um, he's, he's, yeah, Kurt was a pretty small guy. But they made a big deal about this: the placement of the gun that it didn't seem like it was laying where it should have been laying, and uh, you know, they made a big deal about the amount of heroin that was in his system. They they went through this in the documentary where they're like, and this is the one thing that that private detective was always harping on. I was like, there's no way that someone with that much heroin in their system could even be Function. co- <laughs> conscious, let alone functioning enough to uh, pull a trigger, which really isn't that hard to do. But then they, the, Nick Broomfield found some footage of... Uh, a known or a long time heroin addict and Kurt was a pretty big addict at this point, but a long time heroin addict with like tw- two or three times the amount of heroin that Kurt had in his body. And he was doing like, he could, he was pouring tea into a teacup and doing all these like cognate. He was functioning just fine. So that's when Nick, even in the film, he's like, I no longer believed the conspiracy theories. And I think that, Wow, but they uh, they they persist, and I think a lot of the reasons they persist is because so many people hate Courtney. You know, she's not yeah. a likable character in a lot of ways, and that <laughs> there's a little bit of sexism that has that has come into that too, and it's just a different time concerning a lot of that. Where you know the the whole Yoko Ono thing, where 
you blame the woman for the destruction of a, a beloved band and that all played into it so eh, there's a lot to the conspiracy that muddle muddies it uh do we have rob i heard a, a little beep there i'm here well welcome back it has be been entirely too long we have so much to talk about <laughs> <laughs> how are how are things in the uh, mortuary world world is business booming booming yes all sorts of fun stuff are happening uh, <laughs> like i said the last time i was on here the funeral world hasn't changed in a hundred years except these last five years we've seen massive changes so it's been exciting Be wow. because of uh covet i'm guessing We've seen changes due to COVID. We've seen all sorts of uh, new products that are coming out, that mostly around cremation and stuff, but mm. uh, all sorts of new things that you can do with cremated remains. It's It's been kind of crazy. It's hard to keep up with it all. Huh. Well, well, I know before we ever started talking about the return to nature thing, one of the times we had you on the show, we talked about these uh, environmentally sound, supposedly environmentally sound ways of handling the dead and so we knew it was a thing <laughs> and i believe i guess the return to nature was one of the the bigger ones that popped up over recent years Th that's a bit of what we're going to talk about tonight um how how familiar are how familiar are you with that uh, story at this point i've seen quite a bit in our trade journals i've talked to a lot of people that have been around it um, i know a number of funeral homes in colorado that have kind of shared some things with me so wow. i don't have all the details but I, I you know i do know that there's a lot of a lot of different factors at play here trade journals so what how how is the story being talk about that like what you're getting these like uh th this is what not to do <laughs> is there like a newsletter yeah. that you all get like insider stuff well, let me put it to you this way if you have to be told not to do what <laughs> yeah. the said, then, um, <laughs> it's probably a good thing that they're closed down they're probably not in business uh, but, anyway yeah you know one of the biggest issues that we saw with that is um, legislation and i know that was one of the topics that uh, you guys had talked about at the conclusion of your episode where you were where you were discussing it is how does this happen how does this take place and colorado is a very unique state in the fact that it has very very limited uh legislative uh, yeah. legislation that oversees uh, in fact licensing for funeral homes and funeral directors is almost non-existent um, hmm. there is a big push though right now thankfully that <laughs> i weird. imagine so <laughs> hey let's figure out a way to to oversee this a little bit better yeah well, wow. I, I'm curious, I, and I don't want to hang on this too long, but when you started seeing the story in the trade journals, was it just presented in a similar way that we saw it in the news? Or was it yeah. like, is it a specific way of dealing with like, in, I, I'm curious about that. How does that read in the trades? I was sort of fortunate in the fact that due to my position uh, and within the state of Washington, uh, being able to connect through the through the National Association, I kind of knew it was coming a little bit before it really broke. Um, but it was only moments before it broke, uh, yeah. so there wasn't much we could put out. But it's just it simply was one of those things where, just like you saw in the paper and on the news and everywhere else, this is what's transpired and and. We're just now getting the information, more and more information will come out. So there really wasn't um, much of a heads up, uh, but we do have, you know, we did get a little bit of notice that it was it was coming and, and to hear about it. The, these legislative so, laxities, if, if you want to look at it that way in Colorado, how widespread is that? Like how many states do we have with loosey-goosey rules and regulations concerning how we dispose of the dead do you know my knowledge right now colorado is the only one that's pretty much wide open uh, mm. you don't need a license as i understand it to be a funeral director you don't need a license to have a funeral home so absurd um that what's well and what's kind of even more absurd is with the lack of people moving into the business uh, getting into the profession we are seeing and hearing a lot of states, including right here in Washington, people talking about, 
maybe we should relax our, our regulations mm. uh, to be able to get more people to to come into the business because there's such a huge shortage of, of individuals going into the funeral profession. Why but, do you think that uh, is? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, it's, it's, you know, w- w- the people that we see going into it, uh, many of them are going into it because it looks cool. You know, you get mm. to drive a hearse and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people have that idea. Mm. Uh, there's the other part is there's, you know, it's corporations have, have uh, become very prevalent in bigger cities. And so uh, there's not a lot of people that are interested in moving into the, quote, corporate world, if you will. Uh, mm. But then again, there's also not a lot of people that are willing to move to the small towns to you know, take on a funeral home. So it's just right. it's one of those situations where we're seeing way more uh differences in disposition and that's is causing a lack of people going into the profession a lot of people want to join the profession because they get the opportunity to embalm or that sort of thing with embalming that's one of the dying arts of the funeral profession it's just not as prevalent as it was at least in the pacific northwest Mm. mine would be uh, job job security that well yeah exactly (laughs) it is job security but who is pushing for more relaxed uh, regulations. There, there are people in this state for sure that are that are making that suggestion that we should relax those regulations. But there's just as many people on the flip side to that coin that are saying, "But wait a second, look what's happening in other places where those regulations have been relaxed." Yeah. Do we want to get into that position? To be honest with you. Uh, there's the, the to get into the profession is actually fairly simple uh to get into the schooling is actually very simple a lot of people you know are saying well maybe i can't afford it or something like that and that you know there is there is that there that is definitely a concern but there are plenty of scholarships that are out there i mean we have our own scholarship with the association and and half the time we don't give it out because nobody applies for it Huh. And so it's like That's you can't really say it's a financial aspect when there's opportunities out there to have your schooling paid for. You just don't put the effort in to fill out the form. It sounds like more than relaxed regulations, what you guys need is a good marketing team <laughs> to let people know that this is an interesting industry. And uh, they're like Lyle said, job security. I mean, people are going to continue to die. Yeah, we're embalming less. I, I'm guessing that's because more and more cremations are happening. I mean, I, I, or, or can you still can you be buried without being embalmed? Oh, absolutely. Most people okay. today that are buried are not embalmed. Uh, embalming is embalming is getting a really bad rap in the press if you will you know it's 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 bad for you it's it's you know all these different things and the truth is yes embalming is bad for you but that's if you're standing over the embalming machine breathing it i mean <laughs> it is a cost chemical true oh, oh it it's bad for the person cancer. doing it i was like well yeah, it's, not gonna, like, it's not gonna hurt the dead guy. Alert, you <laughs> dead already <laughs> yeah, you didn't you're know. gonna get this guy um, any cigar <laughs> But Interesting. the reality is we use we use uh, we, you know we use per- personal protective equipment to a point where with respirators and, and and masks and gloves and aprons and the different things that we use uh, it's not as dangerous as it was even back when I first started yeah. uh, 30 years ago I mean it was amazing what I what we use now compared to when I first got into this, it was a pair of rubber gloves, and you were lucky if you had a plastic apron that you were wearing. And that was about your the extent of your personal protective equipment. Now sure. you look like you're going into surgery. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I have a question. I have a question for you, Rob. So it seems like yeah. um, I have to believe that there are like federal regulations uh, around, like you know, like restaurants and stuff, like you know, inspections for restaurants to like you make sure that they're following certain codes and things to like maintain like safety, food safety standards and stuff like that. And to, in my mind, like the funeral industry uh, would be just the same kind of thing, where it's like, well, you would want to have like some oversight into like how you know people are being treated it does seem like you know worthy of federal coverage yeah <laughs> is that federal re- regulation. is that not a thing or is that when it comes to funeral homes 
there's very little federal regulation. The biggest one is more in pricing guides um, with through the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, most of the funeral homes are regulated by the states. Mm. And, you know, 50 states, 50 different sets of rules, 50 different inspection points. Wow. Uh, it, you know, uh, unfortunately, our state uh, underwent a situation where we lost one of the two inspectors that we had. And, and, and we were down to one inspector for a good long time. We just finally got a second state inspector. Uh, but part of the other issue was, you know, the, the inspector that we did have was required to remain at home. They couldn't go out and do their job because of how the state addressed things like being out in public with COVID and that sort of thing. So there was a lot of lack of inspections that took place over the last four or five years uh, where they're just now getting out and doing those inspections, at least locally. But again, there's about... 200 roughly a little more than 200 funeral homes in the state of washington we've got two inspectors for the whole state it's going to be a while before everybody gets inspected again wow that, that's, that's insane. crazy that, to is, me. that is insane <laughs> so for, literally like it, it's not just a head inspector like that they're literally the only people that go to inspect these places right there's there's basically two <laughs> currently wow uh, they're through the department of licensing um, they look at a lot of different things from what's going on at your facility. But more importantly, they're also uh, reviewing licensing. Do you have the proper licensing? Uh, yeah. You know, we've, we've added a new license over the last couple of years, um, and it's a timed license. It, it, it expires, or the, the requirements for the license expire every five years. This year, we are just getting to that first expiration date and that's a that's a license called a crematory operator license um to get that you have to have a training every five years and that five-year mark is coming due so we currently in the state have over 50 crematory operators that are seeking to renew that license to be able to legally operate crematories within the state hmm. even that number so seems it, it, surprisingly it low to me I mean, there, well, there's not a lot, you know, you would think there's a lot of crematories out there, but there really isn't. There's really only about 200, roughly, or a little less than that. Well, that was part of the story of Return to Nature, was that they didn't have their own uh, crematory. Is it crematory or crematorium? Uh, it, are both Crematorium is, is <clears throat> mostly the plural of crematory. So, Creamery. So Creamery. <laughs> let's not go with that. <laughs> well, that's kind of where <laughs> Return to Nature went. Um <laughs> Let's talk about Return to Nature because obviously, you know, I don't. We, when we covered it, we we talked about how they got into financial trouble, and you know, it's easy to imagine. Well, it's not easy to imagine, but if you're trying to figure out how something like this could start, you can't fathom about where uh, fathom where it ended up. But how something like this could start? Maybe they were just stacking a couple of bodies, waiting until their finances turned around, then they would get them taken care of and business as usual. Um, <laughs> you five or 10, you'd think you'd start being like, okay, we're in more trouble than we thought here. Um, but the fact that this went so far, obviously we've talked about the regulations and it, I mean, Jesus, even in Washington where we haven't had a story like this, there was one inspector for a while. So, that answers some of the questions about how so much of this could happen without anyone knowing about it. But when uh, Melissa was here to share her story, she mentioned that by the time this was truly discovered, there was, what, two or three inches of human decay sludge actually on the floor. On a scale of one to I have to get myself off this planet, how pungent would the smell be at that point i'm not trying to be funny or gross here i'm i'm, I'm just this we're, we got to be talking about an absurd amount of odor and how would they is there a way that they could have been trying to mask that besides like a magic tree fresheners is that chemical is there you know, anything there's yeah there's chemicals there's all sorts of stuff but to be honest with you if you're working in that sort of a setting you are so used to it that you don't even notice it. It's the people that are coming into the building that are saying, whoa, what is this? Hmm, but wow. the, as a worker, you, you walk into something like that, 
it's almost as you become immune to it almost. Sure. I don't so, know why I don't and, like and that. Do. <laughs> it makes sense, of course, well, but yeah, I, I don't like it. One thing, Ron, I, I would uh, put out there, not to say, not to correct you, but I do have a correction for you. We did have a story not exactly the same, but very similar to that in Washington. Really? A long time ago, back in the 80s. Um, and the outcome of that was that everybody now that is cremated, whether that's through fire cremation or water cremation, is issued a little metal coin. It looks like about a in between the size of, a say, a 50-cent piece and a quarter. But on that coin is stamped a number. It's an individual number, and it's stamped the name of the crematory. Now, the requirement is that that coin goes through the process with the individual and it remains with the individual until you give that to the family or bury the urn or whatever you're going to do with the remains if you open up an urn you should be able to find that coin in there and anybody that's ever scattered remains um, if they didn't know about it they sure did once they scattered it because all of a sudden here's this coin that comes oh, popping out interesting but uh, it's definitely it, it's the problem that we had in Washington back in the eight, I want to say it was the early eighties. Uh, it, was, it was actually before my time, which is hard to say anymore after <laughs> 34 years. Sure. Uh, but uh, it, it was definitely before my time, but it was something that transpired uh, because of the fact that people weren't being cremated the way they said they were being cremated. And it was a, it ended up being a, it was more of a transportation issue of transporting the individuals to the crematory where the cremation was taking place. So now everybody has that coin issued to them, and, and it's a great way to, you know, the number that's on that coin gets put onto all paperwork. So you can, if, if somebody comes into your, like I had a, a for a, as a, for example, I had a, a guy walk in one time totally decked from head to toe in camouflage, camouflage paint on his face, head, I mean, to, you couldn't see him. He was that camouflaged. He hands me this urn, and what had happened was he was up duck hunting, and this urn came floating down the river and uh, bobbed up against his boat. And what he did was he opened it up, found the coin, saw the name of the crematory, and returned it to oh, yeah. the funeral home, which I just happened to be sitting at. And so then it was wow. my job to investigate who this person was using that disc, that coin that's in there. Hmm. So what was, what were, was this case, were they not sending people their loved ones remains? Was it just an improper, were they getting mixed up or were they just not cremating? What was the story as with that I case? Understood it, yeah, as I understood it, again, this was previous to my, sure. my uh, time, but as I understood it, it was a situation where the, the crematory was about oh, 20 miles away. And so instead of taking one person over at a time, dropping that person off, and then going back the next day after the cremation to pick that person up, they were waiting till they had four, five, six people oh, to transport no. at one time. Okay. And then of course, when you you know you start transporting, if you're not if you're not proficient with proper identification, it can get pretty quickly mixed up who belong who's who and and yeah. whose paperwork belongs to who. Yeah. So it was, it was a situation of that. Hmm. Is Washington the only place that does something like that with the coin? No, nope, it that actually it was something that started here, but has passed along, basically moved to the east, and now most every states have some sort of identification coin like that. So you know, I guess you could say we were the leaders in it, which is good. But how we got there was a was a kind of a horrific way to get there. And but that does it, that it coin out some good thing. Does that coin get put with the body when it goes into the cremation process? Is it like part of that and it's all kind of swept out or is it added so later? So usually you'll put that, you usually put that coin in the crematory chamber with the individual. And wow. then when you open the chamber after the process is done to sweep the remains out, you'll remove that coin uh, and keep that coin with the remains all the way through the processing the placing uh, of the remains into the urn and uh, through giving that back. And there are people that I've, I've seen that have taken that coin after scattering and they'll repolish it and 
use it as a memorial keepsake. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it's a so, wild, morbid I mean, keepsake, it, but it's an interesting keepsake so, for sure. Yeah, it is. It is. But you know, people people like doing things like that to remember their loved ones, and and um, that's one of the options that they would have. So, Chris, when you got your father's remains, did you get that coin and your remains, or did those remains go straight to the company that turned those into the stones? Did you ever have that coin? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, you know, I feel awful saying this, but I, I never even had the courage to open my dad's box of ashes. I, I didn't want to do it. I get it. And uh, <laughs> I I just threw that fucking box in the mailbox, basically, in the, in the you know, they, they sent me a box to package his remains up in. Yeah. I never even opened them. I just put them right in the box to send off to uh, Parting Stone, and they never sent me back that disc. Hmm. Uh, I was just wondering. I was like, I don't think it's in the middle of a rock or something, but I never uh, I never got it back. I didn't, I didn't know it was there until, you know, 10 minutes ago when yeah. Rob mentioned this. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, well, and you, there's no reason to feel bad about that. There's, you know, this is mourning, and this is weird shit. I mean, forget all of the emotional stuff. You know, it's like it's morbid. It's yeah, it's creepy yeah. and gross and weird. And like, what are you yeah, going to do? What are you going to do when you open it? You're going to look at it. And totally. Do you want to mm-hmm. risk breathing some of it? It's a weird. <laughs> I don't blame you at all for not opening that. I, I actually had a, a party at my house on Saturday. I hosted a birthday party for a friend. And I had like 15 people in my house walking around. At one point, I was talking with a guy I fair, I know fairly well. And he looks over, he's like, what's the story with these rocks, man? And he grabs the bowl of rocks on my shelf. And I was like, oh, it's my dad. <laughs> That's all he could do. So I stepped back and he was like, oh. <laughs> back away, not today, crazy friend. And I was like, and I had to kind of take a step back and explain it. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it's my pop, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wild. Um, uh, I'm sure Rob knows at this point. I can't. The timeline of when we've had you on last, I'm sure Rob knows that... Uh, you, you were inspired to do it. Wasn't it Rob that told you about mm-hmm. that, Chris? Like he brought that oh, up yeah, on the show? Oh, yeah. I actually, I think I've had some discord with Rob back and forth about I just felt like my dad's stones and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, Rob, it, obviously more and more people aren't getting embalmed, even if they're getting buried. Is the number of people getting cremated uh, going up and up? I feel like most people I talk to, th- their their plans are to get cremated. What happens to them after that? Maybe they care. Maybe they don't. Maybe they want to be sprinkled here. But most people just... They get as far as, ah, I just want to be cremated. Don't bury me. Does that seem to be the more of the trend? Well, yeah, and the interesting part about it is the cremation is considered the final disposition in this state. So once the cremation is done, what you do with the cremated remains is strictly up to you. Yeah. You can, you know, you can take to a cemetery. You can turn into stones. There's, uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, literally, there's there's a company that will shoot them into outer space for you. Um, so, you know, you could do that. You can, there's a company that will take cremated remains and press them into, uh, synthetic diamonds. It, 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 it's really just amazing what's happening with it. But again, it, once the cremation is done, that's the final disposition. So you've got the opportunity to do a whole lot of things. As far as people being buried, uh, you know, I think the people will always be buried. Um, and, and we might see a few more upticks in the percentage of people because right now we're probably about a little about 80 82 percent of the individuals in in washington being cremated but oh, wow. with things like natural organic reduction with things like uh, water cremation you will see a, I, i'm pretty sure you're going to see a little bit of a decrease in that as people are choosing these other methods of disposition but burial will always be there it'll always be a process it's it's really the oldest this is what kind of makes me laugh is you know the return to home place was always talking about where the green the new green funeral home and we're going to do it the green way and and you talk about green and you know people talk about well we're going to be green we're going to have green burial it's that new green burial and it's it always makes me laugh because green burial is literally the oldest form of disposition known to mankind i right. mean Green burial is essentially you die, somebody digs a grave, they put you in the grave and they bury you. Yeah. That's green burial. Pushing daisies. So when you hear people talk about, you know, it's I'm, I'm doing that new that new green burial. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not new. Yeah. Well, like uh, I said, but, it's all uh, about marketing. Um, so it's are, all about marketing. Are the ashes, they're not considered any kind of like biohazard then? No. Yeah. That's, in, that's interesting. Because it's human remains, I guess, and but they can go kind of anywhere. <laughs> the, like well, the... 
what they are is actually pulverized skeletal remains. Hmm. So, you know, they're, they're all of the DNA, all of the uh, disease is, is cremated out Scorched, of them. Scorched, yeah. Or if there's water cremation, that's all gone. If it's through natural organic reduction, that all gets removed through that, those processes. About the only thing that we've seen so far that uh, is an issue um, with disease remaining after death for a long period of time is is uh, diseases that are prion diseases like uh, Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease. It's a it's it's basically the human form of mad cow disease, and with 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 that type of a passing, there is a requirement that that individual gets buried. Uh, and not cremated or any other process just because we don't know if those prions will be destroyed through that cremation. Hmm. They could be trans they could be transferred to whoever opens that urn up. Interesting. Hmm. I'm I'm kind of surprised yeah. that uh, it's that high uh, in Washington anyway. Uh, over 80% being cremated. I have to imagine that a good chunk of the people continuing to be buried, wanting to be buried, is tied to religion. There's a lot of religious beliefs um, that, it, like, it, considering cremation or any kind of destruction of the body itself as some sort of uh, sacrilegious thing and possibly, uh, you know, I've heard people uh, talk about that it it makes it so you can't be reunited with your body in heaven, which I, I suppose would suck for Christopher's dad when he gets to heaven um, to have to be like a few stones. Way to go, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my bad, dad. <laughs> you know, I, I had a, a gal one time ask me about that. Um, and, you know, my response to her was, listen, if you believe if you believe in Jesus and you believe that you were created from dust, don't you think if you were created from dust, you could be re rebuilt from dust? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but you know, yeah, people doesn't. have their own beliefs. They do. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't mean to <laughs> mock those beliefs, but it is interesting because it's not like your body, uh, you know, after a hundred and some years being no matter what, how you were treated, down there it's not going to be the same as when you left it and it's like there's a lot of skeletons down there so yeah that's a strange one to me well, but there's a lot of strange ultimately things every form of disposition that we currently have available to us in the state your body ends up in the same spot it's just a matter of time how long does it take to get it to that basic elemental forms mm -hmm. uh, with cremation it's three to four hours water cremation it's four to five hours with Aerial, who knows how long it could be. With organic reduction, it's about 60 days. So it's, you know, it all ends up in the same spot. We are designed to be, I hate to say it, but we are designed to decompose to our, the basic elemental state that we are. I I don't see anything weird about that. That is obviously the most natural thing. Like you said, green burial is how it, it was done for <laughs> countless millennia. Uh, and... So, yeah, that's nothing new. And it doesn't, how could that not be the most natural thing? Although uh, burning up in uh, fire feels pretty natural to me, too, because, I mean, let's be honest, some of us go that way. The whole discussion is so personal and it's so strange. This is kind of a kooky question. This uh, is something I've been seeing from time to time. But I'm curious if you've seen any, especially knowing that you, you know, hadn't even thought about that you guys have your own trades. Of course you would. But, this talk of, you know, as we get into more technology or AI or even 3D um, hologram type stuff, I, I read an article, I can't remember when or where it was, about the future of mausoleums or, you know, because one thing about burials is, and some people, they get a grave in the tombstone, even maybe they bury the uh, ashes there. Maybe there's nothing there. That's just a memorial and a place that they can go visit place flowers, maybe say a few words. There, there's something to that. You know, I have a lot of dead friends and dead family members, and there is something, I don't know if I'd go so far for me, I don't know if I'd go so far to call it therapeutic, but it's it's a nice ceremonial thing. It feels respectful, and uh, and it's, it's heavy. It's heavy when you go visit somebody's grave. But th this idea that you could go to somebody's grave and, like, suddenly uh, this... AI thing will pop up and speak to you 
and you know it's not like pulling up a photo or a video of a dead loved one and just hearing their voice and seeing them but the ai thing will be they'll have a, like a new conversation is there talk of any of that being implemented into your industry that like on a practical level or is that still kind of pie in the sky more fringe stuff at this point no we're seeing it we're seeing all really? sorts of stuff come out um the big thing that we're seeing right now is the use of qr codes uh on on different monuments and things where you can scan that and it takes you to that individual's life story oh that's um, great wow but it's not it's it's not like what you were just describing where now they're talking to you they are talking to you, but on a on a pre recorded video or sure. audio. Yeah. Um, but you can do it right on your phone as you're standing at the gravesite. It, it's really cool. Just scan the QR code. But there are places that are toying with the idea of how do we create an AI uh, image uh, to be able to you know uh, have have somebody sitting at their sitting in the pew at their own funeral and talking to everybody so as they're walking by the you know walking by to pay their respects or whatever. They could give it their is, own eulogy. It, <laughs> <laughs> and give their own eulogy yeah absolutely wow well so, like i say i mean a hundred years for a hundred years nothing's changed in this profession yeah. it's been the same but for the last five the last ten we have seen just some of the most craziest obscure things uh come out and you, you typically see them at the big national uh conventions like the one we just had back in las vegas um some of the stuff that's out there that people are doing some of the innovation is just amazing uh, again it's uh, a lot of it's centered around cremation because probably that's a little easier to use uh as a as a medium i guess you could say yeah but um you know I, the technology is is there was talk of that happening just like you were talking about the ai so yeah it's coming it'll be there wow that is something to think about um anybody else got any questions for rob I don't want to hog the mic here. And I don't want to move past... I mean, if you have anything else you wanted to say about the return to nature story, Rob, uh, feel free. You know, I would just give a piece of advice, and I know it's, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty and all that, but moving forward for anybody listening, if you are ever in a position where you need to locate a funeral home... Um, do so before you absolutely have to do it. Take some time and, and look at what's in your area and go investigate it. Go investigate the funeral home. Make sure that they're licensed. Make sure that they have professional, reputable people that are there. Uh, do, even do a, a Yelp review or a, a, you know, a, a Google Star review and see what they have. I mean, there are yeah. some funeral homes out there that have just horrible ratings. And it's sad, but there it it's the reality. So, do your research. Um, you can go to any funeral home you want to. If you're if you're looking just to compare prices, you can go to any funeral home in the country, and they'll give you a general price list. It's required by the federal law to do that. So, I recommend it. Take a few minutes and and just go in and see uh, before you are in a position where you have to choose a funeral home. Yeah, and when you're in that position, you're obviously also likely to be in mourning and also dealing with just the logistics of handling, you know, as Christopher can attest, if you become the person responsible for dealing with the remains, dealing with the property and handling all that, that's a lot to deal with in and of it's itself. So, so much. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a good tip to do that before you have to, you know. <clears throat> Rob, are you going to yeah, stay on for yeah. some? Uh, oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, go uh, ahead. I'm, we're hoping you'll stay around, stick around here for some strange trivia, uh, per usual. Oh, you got sure. A, few, a couple more minutes. Okay. To. We uh, we're trying the new thing. I don't know if we were trying to record two shows in one night, so we have a second slot coming up here with the second guest. So, is there anything else you guys okay. wanted to ask Rob while we have him on? I know we've wished he was on several times in the last couple months. <laughs> I want to ask, and I'll let you guys, I know I've hogged a mic, but I want to ask because we brought it up. Rob, are you aware of this, the autopsy report on Kurt Cobain that has recently been published? I have not seen it, but I can imagine just from experience what it could say. I don't I haven't seen it though. Can you mm -hmm. tell me? 
Uh, Chris, you read the whole thing. Is there any uh, specific questions you had for Rob about it or it, any interesting No, points? I mean, it's the very first autopsy report I've ever read, so I couldn't tell you <laughs> yeah, if well, it was sure. thorough or proper or, you know, what. But somebody posted a twi uh, Twitter link to it, and I sent it to the guys, and I, I kind of told them before you got on, I was like, I definitely felt like it was something I shouldn't be reading. Like, I felt guilty about it uh, a little bit. Like, you know, it's not my business, really, but he is a celebrity, and, I, you know, we're all kind of like, ooh. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, we, we were bringing it up before you got on because, you know, we know you had some some involvement with that on some level. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, when you get a chance, maybe yeah, look, look that over and let us know what you think, and we can uh, maybe chat about that the next time we, we get you on. I'll, I'll send you a message on, on my thoughts. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, there may be nothing to talk about, really. I mean, it could just be a straightforward thing, but I was just curious if you saw it because, as we've talked about, you were – uh an assistant an apprentice on that uh on handling Kirk back Cobain's in that time period i was i was uh an apprentice yes and i was at the funeral home that he came to uh so i i i was around the the media i was around all of it yeah i'm sure i asked you this on one of their one of us probably asked you this on one of the shows you were on but is it <laughs> I mean, this is your profession, so, you know, ob I mean, you said you don't even smell the smells anymore, and I understand that. It, it, does it still kind of hit different when it's, when, like, holy shit, that's Kurt Cobain's body laying in it? Is, is, that, is that a different kind of experience handling something uh, like that or somebody like that, or is it just business as usual for you? You know what? On some levels, there are definitely some factors that you have to play in and, and know that this is, you know, this might be a celebrity, this might be a, an individual, it could be your family member, it could be all sorts of stuff. But the reality of it is, is the person that's there at this point, you're just doing the best you can to serve that family as in whatever form or fashion they need, whether that's juggling through media and, and that sort of stuff, or just simply working you know, with the family. I mean, we do, we do what we do in a manner of, you know, there's always that idea that, oh my gosh, this is so-and-so, but reality is this is also somebody's loved one. It's somebody's, you know, child. And, um, you kind of look at it from that angle and say, do I want somebody doing things like that to my child or, or, you know, to my loved one, if they were famous? So, you kind of look at it from that light and say, you know what, this is this is still somebody's child, and we need to we need to give them respect and and uh, provide them with a dignified uh, service, whatever, no matter what they're choosing to have done. Yeah. Uh, anybody else got one one more question before we move on to some uh, weird triv? All right, I think we handled it, Rob. We we no, we, 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 need, I'm good. Uh, we need to get you on more often. I know we always say that, and you got your uh, you're busy and we're busy, and but uh, yeah, when you get a chance, you can look that Kurt Cobain thing over. There's so many questions I want to ask about uh, other things, but we we do have a time limit now that we're doing two episodes. But uh, we'll get you back on the not too distant future. But we'll stick around. Well, you guys uh, are always welcome to call me for sure. Oh, do you want to plug your podcast real fast before oh, yeah. uh, we move on? Good call. Oh, yeah. Well, so we have a podcast uh, It's called Member Talks by the Washington State Funeral Directors Association. Uh, we talk about anything funeral related. Right now, we're mostly talking about a bill we're trying to get passed in the state of Washington. Uh, but anything funeral related uh, is we talk about on this show. And it's usually anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes long. It's a quick one. But it's just something to share content with people about what's happening in the funeral world, at least in the state of Washington. It's awesome. Nice. I bet you can get some very interesting guests on there, too. We've had quite a few, yes. Hmm. Uh, and some of the conversations we've had, some very serious ones and, and comical ones. Yeah, that's the thing. And, uh, you know, it's really an interesting industry. And there's a lot of mystery to it. And I always appreciate that when you come on the show, you, you're, you're willing to go anywhere uh, you want with us. We may not be respectful, but you're always respectful and uh, more knowledgeable about this stuff than anybody I've ever talked to. So we appreciate you uh, well, always you. always being our go-to mortuary undertaker, uh, funeral director, whatever you call it. I love the word undertaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's a little antiquated mm -hmm. and you're probably not out mm -hmm. there with a the shovel, but uh, 
you know, <laughs> metaphorically, you are the you are guiding people into their final phase. And what a fucking responsibility. And it makes me feel good to know that uh, there are at least some people like you out there doing it, especially after the horrors of uh, this last story, Return to Nature, which I believe are few and far between. And let's keep them few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fix Amen. your shit, Colorado. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, how do you want to oh. do this? You want to take a break or should we just go right on into it? Let's jump right into this. It's Weird Trivia with Christopher F. Hart. A bat in Florida who thinks square shit in nature. Don't get me started on the Normal, normal lineup tonight. Ron, John, Mark, Lyle, then Rob will go at the end. I got four questions for you, and I'm quite fond of this uh, selection here, so let's have a little fun. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to start things off with a question about Batman Begins, Christopher Nolan's first entry into his Batman trilogy. Have we all seen that? Yes? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was one of the more forgettable oh, so ones good. for me, but uh, yeah. Oh, you're you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. You. sorry. That's great. I was getting a little blurry eyed at that point. <clears throat> Fair enough. Uh, all right. When Christopher Nolan was making this movie, uh, this person actually auditioned to be the Scarecrow. He would lose to Cillian Murphy, who did a great job. And uh, Cillian Murphy has gone on to, my God, didn't he just win an Oscar? Yeah, oh, for wrong. Oppenheimer. Anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, this person auditioned to play the Scarecrow and really wanted it. Who was it? We almost had this person as the Scarecrow. Was it uh, A, Robert Downey Jr.? Okay. B, Brad Pitt? Hmm. C, Marilyn Manson? <laughs> Interesting. Or D, Carrot Top? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> The uh-huh. <laughs> carrot herring did not see that coming. Oh, you know, that you rarely just because you don't have enough carrots in your life. Hard to not reach your for. Not even... <laughs> hard to not pluck right. that carrot. Okay. Again, real quick, uh, Christopher Nolan, when he was making uh, the first Batman movie, Batman Begins, he actually auditioned this person for the Scarecrow, and they really wanted the role, but would lose to Cillian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Brad Pitt, Marilyn Manson, or Carrot Top, Ronster. Well, I feel like even at that point. I mean, my timeline's fuzzy, but I feel like Robert Downey Jr. was a little fucked out in comic book movies. Um, Brad Pitt is interesting because he's had a very interesting career, and man, I really like it when that guy goes dark because he's capable of going very, very dark. Uh, I could see that. Um, C was, remind me, C, I'm sorry. Manson. Boy, I am torn between Manson and Carrot Top. <laughs> wow. You just look at the, well, your response now confuses me, but that could be a, a response herring. Oh, I fuck keep looking me. deep in oh, my response. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I'm Definitely going Carrot Top, herring. motherfucker. <laughs> oh, right. well, I'm going to reward right, you sure. for putting Carrot Top in there. Mm, I right, believe Manson might be I the deserve- herring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carrot Top's a bigger surprise, so yeah, I'm going all Carrot, all Top. John Mark, that motherfucker yeah, could be right creepy that, as fuck. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm going down right down that uh, root vegetable hole with Ron and, and, and <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I uh I saw root vegetable hole open up four hole actually in '98. Uh, yeah, so. and then they fell into it. It was sad. They didn't find the gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm gonna go uh, with Marilyn Manson. Going with Manson. Yeah, that's. I it. think he would be about that age where he could click with the Batman universe, you know, and know who Scarecrow is, and be yeah, like, oh, sure. and no, no doubt that he could pull it off. Everybody, you know. Yeah, I, I, I would watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch him. Yeah, that's Rob. before he was kind of canceled. Out of those four, I would go with Carrot Top, only because Ooh. that dude looks like a Scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's. Yeah, I don't know if it's Botox or Uh full-on plastic (laughs) surgery, but that dude has done some stuff to his face that, uh, I don't know. The answer is yes, Ron. God bless him, but, uh, (laughs) whew, I could, uh, he could play some scary motherfucking roles. Just an amber scarecrow. Uh, okay. (laughs) I did not expect to have that many people guess. Yeah, me either. 
the word Nintendo roughly translates to this. Very roughly, by the way. Is A, a quick match. B, luck be to heaven. <laughs> C, peace for wisdom. Or D, symphony of sight. Again, wow. the word Nintendo roughly translates to this. A quick match, luck be, excuse me, luck leave, <laughs> leave luck to heaven, peace for wisdom, or symphony of sight. Hmm. I really thought I would know. <laughs> Seems like a piece of trivia that I would have come across. But, fucking total guess. I'm going to say luck leave to heaven because that sounds like some sort of Japanese saying. Okay, I'll put you down for B. Luck leave to heaven. John Mark. Um, can you go over them uh, sure. real quick one more time? A quick match, luck leave to heaven, peace for wisdom, and symphony of sight. Uh, I'm going with a, a quick match. Okay, Lyle. Oh, um, just to be a hundred percent positive on telling you this. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, Only you. I, could I'm gonna be. say it's it's D. It's D for this question. Oh. But carrot top. I um carrot top <laughs> actually does resemble the scarecrow if you think about it in the very first the yellow brick road. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm I serious. Mean, like, yeah, he does. Yeah. A, he really does. Mm -hmm. That's it. That just blew my He'd mind. He'd be a great uh, version of that scarecrow, huh? That Wouldn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, he needs to. All right. He needs to be in some creepy ass roles. Maybe he is. I don't know. I've followed Carrot Top in a long time. Okay, Rob. Well, I think that I've got to go with Lyle threw me on the Carrot Top one, and uh, <laughs> I think I have to go now with Symphony of Sight because Carrot Top dude is really a Symphony of Sight, and so uh, <laughs> we'll go with that one. I have no idea. Symphony of Sight is a great. I'm just going back. That's a great uh, okay. good phrase. Question three. Scientists believe that roughly 40 to 50% of a person's happiness is determined by this. Is it A, their hunger level? Their hunger? Is it B, okay. yeah, their geographic location? Yeah. Is it C, their wealth? Or is it D, genetics? Again, oh, scientists... Why is that the most depressing? <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Well, yeah. Uh, believe roughly 40 to 50% of a person's general happiness is determined by this. Hunger level, geographic location, their wealth, or genetics. Wow. Ronster. That is interesting and all really good answers. Um Yeah. I mean, obviously, you would think wealth, but we don't know. Well, I mean, we we all know money doesn't buy happiness. <sighs> How hungry you are. Do we know that, though? For yeah. sure. I'd like Dude, to find out. Wealth, I would wealth love to find out, happiness. too. <laughs> we'll report back when my uh, door to my van is not literally taped up with scotch tape. We'll report back. By the way, if you would like to contribute to our Patreon, it's <laughs> patreon.com slash Joe from the Space Pod. Um, Donate any amount. Boy, genetics is really interesting and really kind of a heavy thought because I, you see a lot of, I, I don't want to just get tripped up on depression or mental illness, but it tends to you know be genetic, carry down through the family. Sometimes that's... You know, you learn it, so you teach it. Sometimes mm, something else going on in your brain. I'm going to go with that. It's it's a, it's a heavy answer. Genetics. Right. Because everything for, else you can kind of, uh, you can kind of at least try to change, right? You can move. You can change your G. I believe it would be C. I believe it would be any of these in any kind of poll. But geography is my next guess. But uh, because you can change all those other three, you can't change your genetics. That one's... I don't know, it's hitting me funny. Interesting answer, Ron, sir. Yeah, okay. John Mark. Um, geographic location. All right. <laughs> yeah. Geographic location. It's yeah, it makes such I'm a huge say, difference. Uh, home is where the heart is, and uh, that that is one of those things. 
uh, I wouldn't be happy anywhere else than I am now. You know, I'm, I'm on a mountain ridge area. You know, it's a it, it neighbor's a desert, I suppose, but I'd rather be in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's parts of me that would love to be on the ocean, but like for here, this is home. I it's where it's at, it. man. I'm telling yeah. you. And I couldn't find it anywhere else on the planet. You know, I could go to China, Australia, anywhere. I'm not going to find what I have here. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's, yeah. Washington go State the... in general is pretty uh, incredible. We have everything. We have every geological type. We have every kinds of weather. We have the ocean. We have a country touching us, <laughs> a different country. It's a very unique state. Mm. Rob. I'm going to follow Ron down the genetic trail. I think it's uh, genetics. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll be down for genetics as well. Question four. Sorry, I've lost my place here. All right. <clears throat> In New Jersey, it's illegal to do this. Is A. Speak poorly about Thomas Jefferson in public. Kind of fucking bad mouth, TJ. <laughs> Love these fucking... kinds of stupid laws. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did say. Is it B? It's a, it, It's illegal to wear a bulletproof vest while committing a crime. Hmm. Is it C? <laughs> it's illegal to make a sex tape with your lover without first buying a permit. Oh, got to get a film permit. <laughs> well, that'd be an embarrassing trip to the film office. Mm. Or is it D? It's illegal to bury your cat or dog in your own backyard. Oh, okay. Again, Boy. in oh. New Jersey, it's illegal to A, speak poorly about TJ in public. Not the uh, lovely TJ, but, you know, yeah. Thomas Jefferson <laughs> TJ. Yeah. I were TJ. She <laughs> uh, would love that wear you just a bulletproof. referred to her as the lovely TJ with no further explanation. <laughs> I think I've I think I've referred to her th- as that before. Am I wrong? Fuck, am I? Well, you probably have. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, am I? <laughs> uh, is it uh, uh, C? Make a sex tape with your lover without first buying a sex tape permit. <laughs> I saw a sex tape permit open up for uh, garbage. That's a great uh, oh, what? It's great. <laughs> garbage. Or is it D? <laughs> <laughs> Bury your uh, cat or dog in your own backyard. Ronster, what's illegal boy, in uh, New I... Jersey? I was a solid wear a vest while doing a crime because that's, <laughs> mm-hmm. I have, I can. That's, just, that's a good job logic right there. I know. Well, that's, that's the bottom line. I was going to say I have reasons, but the bottom line is uh, it's, it's kind of logical. <laughs> you got to give us a fighting chance to take you down. <laughs> and that's fucking yeah. funny. But burying your dog and cat, that's got to be. I don't even know what the legalities are anyway. Hey, you've that, seen but... Pet Cemetery, haven't you? Yeah. yeah well, go down you that road. want to bury him down there. Down them road, you can't get there from here. Those goddamn trucks. Um, oh, man, it's hard. Estonia. Boy, I'm tempted to go with cat and dog, but I'm going to go with the uh, bulletproof vest because uh, that's a good call. Ooh, good call, law enforcement, if yeah. that's true. <laughs> well, you can't protect okay. yourself from our bullets if you're up to no damn good. <laughs> Why? Right, that's simply unfair. <laughs> <laughs> you made that up though, Bravo. Bad form. <laughs> uh, John Mark. Yeah, I don't know. These all seem like, you know, there's all kinds of stupid laws out there, and these They're all, all seem like they're good candidates. <laughs> so, I, just something about the bulletproof vest is jumping out at me. So I'm mm-hmm. just gonna do that. Okay. Okay. I want to well. say there's no back sass about our founding fathers uh, here on our property. <laughs> You, uh, start yeah, that's doing gotta that, be a we're thing. Have to back slash you, especially yeah, back uh, east sure. in those old it. states. Yeah, yeah, you could see something like that going on. Grab yourself back. a Guinness. Come with mm-hmm. us. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. we'll, we'll cheer to down at the docks. None of that colonial beer. No. Rob, John Mark said it right. There's all sorts of weird laws out there, and uh, no more so than sex laws. So, I'm going with the sex tape mm-hmm. permit. Too right. Like, yeah, you are. There are some bizarre sex laws. I wonder if you have to give them a rundown. Like, like this is how it's going to start out. <laughs> We're going to need a, we all know a how shot it's list. Finish. I need to see a script. Yeah, I need to see a script and uh, some headshots. <laughs> who's in your lighting? Yeah. 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 Are you, do you have proper you outlets for your script. lights? You know, <laughs> Are you truly representing the state of New Jersey? <laughs> who's, who's your uh, DP? No, no. Not are you doing DP? Who's your DP? <laughs> That's the good. That's a good I bit mean, in there. Uh, yeah. All right, let's well, we go over the field there. That could be a question. One, <clears throat> sorry, 
when Christopher Nolan was making his first Batman movie, Batman Returns, Robert Downey fucking Jr. No uh, shit. Auditioned to be the Scarecrow. And I believe this was before Iron Man. Iron Man. Man. Okay. Huh? This is pre-Iron Man. That's right? what I was wondering. Timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if he was Iron Man already, like, why? Yeah, I don't like, think so. This is pre, uh, yeah, Batman Marvel begins. Cinematic Universe. But that was after. Yeah, it was like 2000. Wasn't that after the Heath Ledger one? No. Batman that was Begins was before run. Heath Ledger? That. No, that that was this is the first Batman movie. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, that, that the makes second sense. one was. For some reason, left. I thought they went backward. Um, the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah Dark Knight. They get confusing. All right, nobody got that right. Whiff. Nobody went with the Robert Downey. Okay. I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Oh yeah. man, that is a disturbing yeah. scene. No way that could possibly well, happen, well, but it's disturbing, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> it works. Uh, the word Nintendo roughly translates into. Luck leave to heaven. Ronster got that right, ah. probably because I was stumbling over it because I couldn't fucking read it right 18 times in a row. I did not catch that. I feel like I should have, I should have known that. <laughs> but it Two points for Ron. He's, that, but... he's got one leg up on you guys already here. Uh, let's see here. I got Scientists two, two do points? believe that roughly... What would you say? Two points? I didn't get the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Ron has one point at this point. Yeah. Apologies. I'm going to regret I'm going to regret changing that. that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Scientists <laughs> believe that roughly 40 to 50% of a person's happiness is just determined by their genetics, which mm. is the second oh, point for on there. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Fucking bummer, but And lastly, I see it. In New Jersey, it's illegal to wear a bulletproof vest while committing a crime. <laughs> See, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Ron and John Mark got that right, but Ronster with three points out of four here. Good hey. job, sir. Wow. Right. Champion. Back on flex top. It. I will flex yeah, you it, are. but not in a bulletproof vest in <laughs> Jersey. Yeah, good call on that one, Jersey cops. <laughs> you mustn't do that. We're going yeah, to need that exposed flesh. Wow. Rob, thank you so much for joining us, man. We really enjoy having you on this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you calling and give me a call anytime. At one last time I before we head out, uh, your podcast. What's the name of it? Member Talks by the Washington State Funeral Directors Association. Member Talks. All right. Well, thanks, Rob. We'll be reaching out to you. Hopefully, not too uh, too far from now. All right, guys. Thanks again. Yep. See Have you, buddy. Good night. Bye. Bye. All right, and with that, let's get on out of here. Tune in next week. We will be talking about 9-11. I hear there's lots of interesting developments with that story. It's a, uh, what do they call it? A fluid, fluid story. So we'll be uh, diving into that. Till then, have a good week, y'all. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Peep, 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 do, peep. Do, 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 do. I would love to find out, too. (laughs) We'll report back when my uh, door to my van is not literally taped up with scotch tape. We'll report back.